One important element that you need to present when writing the methodology section for your research paper, but also for your thesis, is the sample. In other words, who or what you studied. You know, if you have human participants, but it's also the same if you have animal participants, or if you have inanimate participants like enzymes, particles, and things like that, not living objects, right? So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this regardless of what sort of thing or who you are studying. So let's dive in and see how this is done. So this is usually the first element of the methodology section. And I think it's really, really important because the reader at the start needs to know what or who you studied before we can tell them how you studied this thing and how you analyze the data, let alone presenting the results, right? And before we dive into it, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly publish research papers in top journals in the field. So this first element, you know, it can often be called sample, and sampling techniques or participants or sometimes it will have a more descriptive title that identifies the thing or the people that you actually studied right for example the enzymes let's say right that you study so in here what you need to do is first give us some detailed information about this thing or these people that you actually studied you know if you have human participants you need to give us some background information about them first of all you need to tell us how many there were and if you have non-human participants you know how much of these enzymes you studied for example right and um, if you have human participants you know give us some background information about them but keep it to the information that is relevant so this can be age their profession the gender the religion where they live you know who they are are they married are they single do they have children all those sorts of things background information but keep it relevant of course if you're doing a study where one of your variables is gender then it's probably really important to tell us about the gender of the participants but if you if that's not an important thing then you don't necessarily need to present that background information so focus on the things that are relevant to your studied sample right so briefly speaking you need to tell us who or what you studied now the second thing that you need to do here as well is to tell us how you obtained this studied sample so if you're studying inanimate objects you need to tell us like where you got those enzymes or those particles from did you buy them somewhere from another company and they got shipped to your lab did you create them yourself right or maybe they were already there in your lab you know and what were the procedures for creating those particles or enzymes how step by step were they obtained right and if you got them from somebody else well what is the name of the company and things like that right so you need to explain that and sometimes you might want to as well justify why you did that you know why you try to obtain those and create those materials yourself rather than buy them somewhere else or why you use the specific procedure for obtaining those materials rather than a different procedure you don't always need to do that but sometimes you know if your approach is maybe less common it might be worth justifying that and the same goes for human participants right so you need to tell us how you got these participants into your study did you what, what sort of sampling technique did you use and there's a number of them right you can use completely random sampling there's convenience sampling there's purposeful sampling you know so you need to tell us how you got them what sampling techniques you use and justify why you use this sampling technique and not another one right now if this sounds a little bit theoretical let me show you on two examples of two from two different disciplines how this is actually done so you can get a better idea so i first want to show you an example from more exact sciences where the sample studied is non-human subjects right um, so we've got it here in the experimental section it's called and as you can see and as i mentioned before in this video 
in those fields is very often just called materials because you're really studying, you know, physical materials and non-living things, right? So, as I mentioned, um, they will present what they studied, right? And, you know, where these things came from, right? How these things that they studied were obtained. Uh, you can see that, you know, there's, there's places that they were obtained from, um, the companies where it was bought, right? Because all this is really important, right? And there is specific detail as well about some of those things that they, that they studied, right? So this is really important as well in non-human subjects, right? So you still present what you studied and how you obtained this Thing, meaning, you know, did you buy it? If so, which company from? Um, which specific type of this protein was it, right? Um, and so on, or did you obtain it yourself? Now, when it comes to human subjects, again, it's, it's very similar, right? So if we go down to uh, the methodology, we've got here participants. So let me just make it slightly bigger for you so you can see. Right, um, and in here, you know, there were there were two strands basically. You know, there was a quantitative and a qualitative strand, and each of them, you know, are presented in more detail. So, um, you know, I tell people who was recruited, right, um, how they were recruited, and that they were um, informed about um, the purpose of the study um, as well. And then, you know, I give more details. And as I mentioned, it's not really important to give all background information. For me, for example, like gender wasn't really important in this study, but the countries where these people came from, those respondents, was very important. So I presented um, that, right? I also presented where they worked because, again, that was important for what I was doing in this study. So whatever background information you present, it kind of needs to make sense for the study that you are conducting, right? And, you know, then since there was another um, group of people, this, this time for interviews, right? Not for questionnaires, but for interviews, I presented um, that here and I talk about how they were recruited and what background data was collected about them. So remember, in this section of the methodology, you need to tell us who or what you studied and present that thing or those people briefly, give some background information and tell us how you obtained this particular sample, this thing or these people that you studied and maybe justify why you use this approach for obtaining it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, but you want more help writing and more importantly, publishing research papers in top Scopus Index journals, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team where we're gonna get on a personalized call with you, help you to identify the exact challenges that you're suffering from, and then outline a personalized plan that will help you to achieve those goals faster. And the link to do that, to book that one-to-one -one strategy session is right below this video.